Blake, it's been a while, buddy. It's good to catch up. Kind of want to start with what we got going on in the SEC. Uh, we had Coach Zimmerman on our stations yesterday, who is the uh, color broadcaster for Razorback Men's Basketball, and he said this could be a year where the SEC champion is 14-4, and 13-5. and five. Is there a definitive leader right now in the clubhouse for who's going to win the SEC in basketball this year? Well, Ty, I think despite the fact that they lost to you know one of the three teams, I guess, still that have been unbeaten, even though South Carolina's only played a game, but I still think Tennessee's the best team. Um, from top to bottom, I just don't think there's another team that's going to be able to beat them. You know, I, If we just did it, let's say, a tournament setting um, and compare it all 14 of these teams, I, I think Tennessee's still the best team. I just think their defense is on another level, which you know Arkansas probably has a little idea of that in terms of uh, that game they had earlier in the week. But I just I look at this team that they've got some work to do on offense for sure. But I just think their defense and just the, the depth that they have and all the different guys they go to, uh, I still think Tennessee's the best team. Arkansas's got a matchup against the Georgia Bulldogs tomorrow. A team like the Razorbacks coming off two straight losses. Tom Crane has some talent there, but there are some question marks, just like there are with the Razorbacks right now without Justin Smith. Kind of paint the picture what Arkansas fans should expect from a visiting Georgia Bulldogs team tomorrow, Blake. Yeah, I think records can be uh, deceiving, and I think for Georgia, you know, they're seven and two. But uh, when you look at Maybe some of the games they had in the non-conference portion. I mean, they did have a win against Cincinnati, but I think as we've seen, you know, from Cincinnati, this is sort of a different sort of Cincinnati team. I mean, they're three and six right now. Um, and so beyond that, you know, you can look at the game they had against LSU, and, and you know, that was a really good game. I mean, certainly one of the better games we've seen to this point in the SEC. Um, but I just – they're going to play fast, but at the same time, they're just a team that I – there's really two of the things that with Georgia – has been one of the problems since Tom Crean's gotten there, and, and that's the fact that they don't really take care of the ball great, and they just cannot shoot from outside. And those have been the two things, I think, that have sort of held them back in recent years, and, and they're still having issues with it. So I think that's the big thing, you know, for Arkansas is when you look at a matchup like that where you have an Arkansas team that, you know, when you kind of compare it to what they're able to do and some of the things that, that Georgia kind of struggles with, I think that's where Arkansas is going to have an advantage because, look, this Georgia team, again, they may have seven wins at this point, but we have to remember, too, this is a team without Anthony Edwards who winds up being the number one pick you know, in the NBA draft. And, and I just don't think that they may win some games along the way. As we said, I mean, they really play tough against LSU, but I just look at this team and, and see it as one of those that probably has a pretty good chance of finishing in that bottom four, uh, even if they are pretty competitive throughout the year. With the reduction of the crowds this year because of COVID, how big a, a bonus is it winning on the road, and how big a requirement is it to absolutely hold serve at home this year? Um, the home court edge isn't what it was, obviously. What are you seeing so far through the, the, the small sample of games we've had in conference play? I think it's making the results a lot more unpredictable because, you know, normally we would look at it and, and see a team go on the road as, you know, maybe a team that's ranked high and goes on the road to play a team that's unranked or something like that. And you feel pretty good about their chances, even though, you know, you would add in the, the atmosphere and all those different things. But now it's like, I don't know, like it just feels like a much different situation. I think that's why we've seen some of these, you know, somewhat interesting results, I think, in the SEC to this point, you know, where you have a team like Alabama who's able to, to go on the road and, and beat a team like Tennessee. And that's not to knock Alabama's talent because I think, Right now, Alabama's easily, for me, a top-three team in the league. But I just think you're going to have a lot of games like that this year where you're going to see it, and you just normally it's like so ingrained in our heads to where when we look at a matchup, it's like, okay, well, let's look at the home team. Like, what are what are the advantages they're going to have with the crowd and the atmosphere? And we just we can't put that into play this year. And so I think it comes down to talent and what is the depth. You know, what are some of the playmakers you have? And those are the teams that, you know, we always say the talent, talented teams are going to be at the top, but – you know, some of those atmosphere situations and different things can come into play to where it can kind of, you know, negate that talent difference. With this year, I just think the teams that are very talented are, are going to wind up being, you know, right there at the top. And it's just, it makes it much harder to predict. The SEC is always unpredictable, but I think this year has been as hard as any. A lot of people have already written Kentucky off as a team that won't be a factor at the top. Is that too early? Where, where do you see Kentucky 
stacking up in this league come come tournament time? I just don't think Kentucky's – they're just not to that level that obviously we're used to. And you could look at the record and determine that in and of itself. But at the same time, I think if you just watch them play – it's so much different with this team, and, and I don't know that it's necessarily their fault because, you know, we go back to always talking about in the, in the offseason, you know, that time they spend together in the offseason for a team like Kentucky that just completely turns over the roster, and more so this year. I mean, they turn the roster over a lot more this year than we're used to. And so when you add all of these different guys and they, they don't have that chance in the offseason to kind of build that chemistry and do all these different things, plus – I just never looked at this class, and don't get me wrong, like this is still, there's a reason why this class was ranked as high as they were. There's a lot of talented freshmen on the floor. But if you compare this class, you know, to that class several years ago, let's say a, a Malik Bunk and De'Aaron Fox and Bam Adebayo, I just, I don't think that they're equal in terms of, you know, having those guys on offense necessarily that are at that point in their game to where you're so confident that they're going to be able to take over a game at any moment's notice. Now, they've got some guys on there that can play, but I just don't think this group is there yet, and we always say that about Kentucky in the non-con is, hey, it's going to take them a while to get going. January, February, they'll get things ramped up. Even with these two wins to start SEC play, I mean, they beat Mississippi State and Vanderbilt, who, again, I think these are two teams that will probably finish in the bottom four, too, and they struggle to beat both of them. So, They've really got to get better on offense. They've got to shoot the ball better. If they don't do that, their defense will keep them in games. They'll probably play a lot of these ugly, sort of grinded-out type games. But unless their offense comes along, Kentucky's going to have to win a lot of games in the SEC to get into the NCAA tournament just because they're non-conference. They have nothing to prove. I mean, they have nothing to show. So I think that's something that's really going to be fascinating to watch the rest of the year. They're going to have to make it the most of these games, and they certainly need to do it in these next two when they play Florida and Alabama. Blake Lovell with this Blue Ribbon Report here on the Morning Rush. Blake, staying on the note of Kentucky, B.J. Boston got booed at home the other night, so fans are restless. I know Cal's frustrated. Does this team have the potential to be worse than that team in 2014 that lost to, or it might have been 2013, that lost to Robert Morris in the NIT? Well, I mean, I think the difference is really is, you know, that team still, I think, offensively had some some bright spots. And I just think this team has just struggled to the point where, you know, I mean, you know, Ty, it's like this is kind of an era where if you're if even if you're a bad team, like we want you to be bad and score 85 points. Like we don't want you to be bad and be struggling to, to hit 70 or 65. You know, if you're going to be bad, at least make it entertaining. And I just think this Kentucky team, like they, they haven't made it entertaining. And I think that's what they're so used to is, you know, fans are so used to seeing these one and done type guys come in and just yeah. be so flashy and just be able to put up points, you know, in a hurry. And, and this is just a team that has not gotten there yet. Um, so it, it is completely unlike anything they've seen. I think if you're a Kentucky fan, even that team, I want to say whatever it was, 2013 or whatever, like they were still pretty good on offense and then they still had some things they could do pretty well. I mean, they would put up points, but this team just has not been able to put up points consistently. And that's what it said. I mean, their defense is going to have to continue to play at the level that they're playing at because if they have a slip on defense, I mean, they're going to, they're really going to struggle. And so I'm very curious to see maybe what adjustments they make. Um, you know, having someone like, like Dante Allen be able to kind of have a breakout game like, like there's so many different aspects of this team you still have no idea about. And maybe this is one that maybe starts to find their groove in early February. But I think by now we're so used to seeing them get there. But just the, the unique circumstances of this season, uh, they're just not there for sure. Blake, let's bring the conversation back to home. Arkansas Razorbacks, I know they're coming off two straight losses. But there have been some bright points this season, especially opening the SEC play with a road win against the Auburn Tigers. Just kind of your early impressions of this Arkansas basketball team and what Muss is doing in year number two. Yeah, I mean, this this is a team, again, we talk about talent. There's there's no denying the talent, I think, on this roster. I mean, you just look at the, the numbers. Their, their balance is something that I think I always like to see teams like that because, you know, as you guys know, if you have a guy – who's maybe off, you know, here or there. If you have a star player and something, you know, and you only have one or two of those, it makes it much tougher. But I think they've got some balance. They've got guys they feel like they can go to in a lot of these different situations. And so I think that really helps them. Um, And, you know, that's going to be something I think is going to be really important because 
you know, whereas you look at some of these other teams, like we said, you feel like maybe they only have one or two guys that on every given night they have to be able to produce. I think if you're Arkansas, you know, you can afford to have a couple of these guys maybe don't have their best games because you've got others that have proven they can they can step up and, you know, take take that production on. So they're going to be right there. I mean, I, I people, you know, they're already start asking about, you know, what do you see with the SEC in terms of the – projecting NCAA tournament teams. I mean, I, even with Arkansas sitting there at one and two in the league, I, I still think they're a tournament team. Um, I, I put them pretty much in my, I don't want to say guaranteed because you never say that, but yeah. I think they're going to be there. Um, and I just look at them and, and see some of the things, like we said, if you compare them you know, to a Kentucky or some of these other teams, they've got comparable talent. Um, they've got comparable depth. And I think when you, you bring that, you know, full force, I think their team's going to be hard to beat. And like you said, I mean, look, you know, losing to Missouri and Tennessee, I don't think is anything to really be all that upset about. I know the one at home against Missouri is a little bit different because they really didn't play well there. But, you know, Tennessee, they had their opportunities. Um, but like I said, I think Tennessee's the best team in the league. So I don't think it's anything to be upset about. It's only to lose that game the way they did. But they've just got to beat the teams they should beat. I think that's what it comes down to because they're going to beat some of these teams along the way. You know, whether it is an LSU, a Bama, um, you know, teams like that, I think they're they're going to be able to win some of those games, but they also need to avoid losing some of those games to teams that they shouldn't, you know, like a Vanderbilt or a Mississippi State or an A and M. Teams like that. And so uh this seems really good and I'm very interested to see kind of how they adjust to these these back to back losses. Uh, when they play Georgia on Saturday. Blake Lovell, you can read his stuff on Blue Ribbon Yearbook as well as the Blue Ribbon Report. Blake, it's always good to catch up, man, and uh, hopefully we'll continue to have some great SEC basketball games to watch this season. Sounds great, guys. Thanks as always. Now, when it comes to SEC basketball, Blake is one of the best. You can follow him on Twitter at the Blake Lovell.